When you're staring at a mountain of schoolwork, it can feel really counterproductive to work on anything else. But what if there was something that made you a more capable version of yourself? Something that made you better and faster at tackling that mountain of work? In this video, we're gonna find out if exercise can do just that. So I think we all know that exercise is very good for us physically. Okay, now's the time. You gotta get up and boogie with this, honey. Yeah, you gotta find that boogie body. Okay, that's good. Looks good, feel the beat. Um chicka, um chicka, um chicka. But what about mentally? So the first thing we should do is define what it means to be more capable mentally, right? What metrics do we care about? And when you think about it, there's, there's six metrics that will really impact your ability to study and to be successful in school. And those six metrics are memory, focus, creativity, comprehension, energy, and stress. So if exercise has a positive impact on any of those six things, then it's probably worth your time. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna go over exactly what type of exercises you can be doing to have the most cognitive benefit. So with that, let's jump into it. Let's begin with metric number one, memory. Your ability to remember will be crucial to your performance on every exam you take, and even more important as your courses build on each other, requiring you to remember material from one, two, and three years ago. So the question is, can exercise improve your memory? So for this one, I'm gonna reference this study here, which showed that regular exercise promoted the expression of BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Yeah, so? BDNF is a key molecule needed in the growth and survival of brain cells in your hippocampus. Hippocampus? Which is the part of the brain responsible for memory. More BDNF, better memory. Oh, cool. In fact, a separate study done in 2014 showed that three 30-minute workouts done per week produced a 16.6% increase in hippocampal volume. What? Do I have a boogie? <gasps> I say it appears my cranium has doubled in size. So let's move on to that second metric that we care about, focus. If you're studying engineering or some other STEM discipline, your ability to focus and concentrate for extended periods of time will be crucial to your success. So anything that can help you deny distraction and stay on task should be taken really seriously. So can exercise help you focus? In this Dutch study done in 2015, they observed significantly higher attention levels in children that exercised more throughout the day. It's been shown that just one session of intense aerobic exercise can boost the performance of your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain responsible for focus and attention. In addition, there have been several studies done, including this one done in 2013, which showed that exercise actually triggers the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, which are known to increase your focus and attention. Let's move on to metric number three, creativity. Your ability to think creatively and outside the box will be important no matter what you study, but it's especially important if you're studying engineering or anything with a design component. So can exercise help you be more creative? You're damn right it can. According to this study done in 2013, people who exercise regularly show significant improvement in divergent thinking which is the ability to think of multiple solutions for a given problem, which is a major component in your creativity. I can personally vouch for this one. I experienced enhanced creativity from exercise, especially when I'm running. You know, it's when I'm running that I uh, tend to do my best and most productive thinking. I think, you know, dozens of times when I'm running and not really thinking about anything specific, that my brain will produce solutions to the problems that I'm working on, seemingly out of nowhere. You know, I think it has a lot to do with the extra blood flow to my brain, and then also kind of the meditative state that I get in when I'm running or biking or doing aerobic exercise. Maybe you guys have experienced something similar. Either way, more exercise equals better creativity. 
I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you are, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. And if you like this stuff and you want more of it, make sure you check out my book. It's called Becoming an Engineer, The Average Person's Guide to Getting Good Grades and Succeeding in Engineering and STEM School. You know, I wrote this book to serve as the roadmap for anybody to have success and graduate with an engineering or STEM degree. Test performance, studying performance, you know, learning how to set up a sustainable schedule, time management, stress management, landing that first internship, it's all in here. It's available in ebook and paperback, and I actually just released the audiobook version a couple days ago on Audible and Apple Books. And to celebrate, I'm going to give away three copies of the audiobook. So the first three comments on this video, I'll send you a free promo code to download the audiobook version. Check the description for links to everything, and thanks for the support. Let's move on to metric number four, comprehension. Your ability to comprehend and understand complex material will play a huge role in your success in school and life in general. The better you are at, at understanding and comprehending complex material quickly and successfully, the easier school will be. So the question is, how does exercise impact your comprehension skills? Big surprise, exercise improves comprehension. In this 2018 study, it was shown that regular exercise actually enhances the neuroplasticity in the brain. I've already done a longer video on neuroplasticity, so if you want a real in-depth explanation, go check that one out here. But in a nutshell, neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to grow, form new pathways, and adapt to stimuli. Basically, it's how your brain will become more capable as your classes get harder and more challenging. Suffice it to say, more neuroplasticity, more comprehension. The study goes on to describe how exercise actually enhances the clearance of the amyloid beta peptide out of your brain, which not only enhances neuroplasticity, but that specific peptide is actually one of the main contributors to the development of Alzheimer's disease. So in other words, exercise not only enhances your ability to learn, but at the same time it protects you from Alzheimer's. Last time I checked, those were both good things. Let's move on to metric number five, energy. The amount of energy you have on a day-to-day -day basis will play a huge role in how productive you are. Between family obligations, work, lectures, studying, while you're in school, you're going to need a steady supply of quality energy to get everything done. Not that kind of energy. I'm talking about the good, healthy kind of energy that can come from exercise. And it might be a little counterintuitive because exercise actually requires you to expend energy, but the science is super clear. Regular daily exercise increases energy in several ways. Exercise boosts the formation of mitochondria in your muscles. And mitochondria are responsible for creating the energy that you use every day, ATP. So more mitochondria equals more energy. Exercise improves the efficiency of your cardiovascular system, which will give you more endurance throughout the day. Exercise promotes better sleep. And the better sleep you get, the more energy you'll have throughout the day. If you're still skeptical about this one, try this out. Next time you're feeling that midday drag or you get home from work and you don't have enough energy to study, go for a 15 to 20 minute jog or bike ride. See how you feel after that. I guarantee you your energy will be higher and you'll be ready to go. And finally, let's move on to the sixth and last metric, stress. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your graduation will depend more on how well you manage stress than how smart you are. So if there's anything out there that can help you relieve and manage your stress more successfully, you should jump all over it. But is exercise one of those things? If you've caught onto the pattern here, then you already know that exercise definitely helps with your stress. But how? Exercise promotes the release of feel-good hormones like endorphins, which actually reduce pain and make you feel, well, good. Exercise reduces the stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. Exercise can really calm your mind, which kind of forces you to take a break from your daily stressors, which can help you be more objective 
and deal with things more successfully as the day goes on. Exercise increases blood flow to your brain, which not only means more oxygen and more nutrients will be delivered, but it also means carbon dioxide and other waste will be carried away at a higher rate which will increase your ability to deal with stress every day. In fact, over the last decade, exercise has really distinguished itself as one of the most effective treatments for chronic anxiety and depression. I can really attest for this one. You know, whenever I'm feeling super stressed out or just kind of down, I'll go for a quick mountain bike ride and I'm good to go. You know, I, it really resets everything in my brain and I feel, you know, a hundred times better. So there you have it. The science is pretty clear that exercise actually has a positive impact on all six of the metrics that will help you become a better student. Memory, focus, creativity, comprehension, energy, and stress. Exercise will help all those things. And it turns out that moderate aerobic exercise is the most beneficial when it comes to your brain. Most of the studies that I referenced indicated that 20 to 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise had the most benefit. So what does that mean, moderate aerobic? Well, it means that your heart rate should be up between like the 120, 140 range, and you should hold it there for 20 to 30 minutes. How you do that is up to you. Running, cycling, swimming, rowing, anything, doesn't matter. Get that heart rate between 120, 140, and hold it there for 20 to 30 minutes, that's it. Also, if you can, studies actually showed that if you can get outside and under the sun and in nature when you do your exercise, there's actually added benefit uh, and stress reduction. So try to get outside when you do your workouts. And this isn't to say that other forms of exercise like weightlifting and yoga are bad. You know, all forms of exercise have their benefit. But when it comes to your cognitive health, moderate aerobic exercise is what tends to show the most benefit. So there you have it. I hope that convinced some of you that, you know, spending all your time on homework isn't always the smartest thing to do, especially when there's other things that you can spend your time on that actually are beneficial and can make you more productive and a better student overall. And I know that exercise isn't always the best and most, you know, attractive thing to be spending your time on. So try to incorporate some fun. You know, what do you like to do? What games do you like to play? For me, this was racquetball. You know, a couple times a week, I'd play racquetball with my friends in school, and it would really take the edge off and help me. So, you know, what, what do you like to do? What kind of games do you like to play? See if you can incorporate those things in your weekly schedule. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you check the description for all the links to the studies I referenced and for a link to my book. But until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.